see the little valve working. I made the distributor. Stop back here. We'll talk about the uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I cleared out. Oh, Let's there he is. Let's go do this. Well, well, well. Hey, this is Leonard. Hey. How are you, sir? Nice to meet you, Mitchell. Hello, Logan. Nice How to meet you? you. What about six five? Yeah, dead on. You're good. <laughs> 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 Let's show them the little motor back here. Yeah. Oh, okay. You need to see this. Well, we were hoping that we'd get to this. Is great. This Get ready. Yeah. Okay. So, and they're working on one now, a 429 Hemi half scale. This one's going to run. That's even got little got seats guides, and guides seats and, and, and everything. Seats and guides, the whole deal. And Leonard does all the contour work to make it look like it was cast that way. That's a real crank. Oh, wow. That came out of a bar of steel, just like that right there. They made the whole thing from the linkage to the butterflies to the shafts to the everything. So now let's go look at one running. It's uh, pretty neat to see how things kind of come full circle. He started with the the go kart, which is like a small car, and now he's and doing that, it again. You control one in the army. Yeah. This is a 390 cubic inch forward engine that would come in like a 61 Starliner. So that's one of his little half scale ones. What I do is I zoom in as he's cranking and then <laughs> back out and you see the little bitty. <laughs> this is the uh, original size. Oh, okay. It looks like it's less than half, but that's, uh, that is half scale. <laughs> and when you first made the half scale carburetor, was it done with the intent to try to run it on a full size engine? Or do you just like, oh, let's see if it'll actually work. And then no, it did. No, 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 no. Uh, we built a half scale 427 mm -hmm. and it's in the Henry Ford Museum and uh, it don't run and the carburetors didn't run. I told Lynn I could make the carburetors run. He said, well, make them run. So I made nine carburetors that'll run them. And the reason we made them just proved we could. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for, on carburetors all my life, really, and uh, so it wasn't a problem to make the thing. It, the little floats were so hard to make and make it uh, shut the fuel off, you know? So, uh... try to dyno this engine see how much power it no, makes <laughs> uh, yeah we just i was making uh, one of the carburetors and before i got done with it i i had the shaft it wasn't finished i just had a pair of vice grips holding the shaft the vice grips fell off it hung wide open blowed the motor up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i half throttle will float the valves pump the hydraulic lifts up on this motor, which is about 5,000 RPM, just half throttle. And uh, it actually pulls about the same horsepower as a 7-8 uh, restrictor plate motor before they went to fuel injection. Huh. And uh, it flows about the same as that. So it pulled like, like 425, uh, 50, uh, 450 horsepower. That's really cool. Yeah, you can definitely tell you put um, put your homework into yeah, it's making that. Yeah, a lot that. of little small holes in this little uh, meeting block. How can you see all of that? Well, I mean, they use magnifying glasses and all <laughs> that. I guess you saw the 4500. I, I showed them. I showed them the blocks and stuff. Up it's a little bit. It's a little bit stronger than this, but we like to run this because it's so small. 
it's, it's smaller than the other one. And all this is made from a, a solid block aluminum. I do all the handwork in uh, Benny Belchow Machinist, which is extremely talented. Uh, does the machine work and I do all the handwork. What is that little engine for? Well, that's the test fix. I don't, he probably didn't tell you anything about the uh, roller tappets, did he? No. We're building a camshaft for this motor we're going to run. And we're going to put a go-kart lobe on it. And the go-kart lobe uh, needed an inch size mushroom tappet. And the engine we're building only can have a half inch. So then that would make the tappet dig into the lobe. Hmm. So I just come up with a roll of tappet, a uh, brass slot with a uh, pin through the through all of it to keep it from turning and then mount it in the engine. And uh, we put it in this go-kart motor to test it. And it run four hours, 3,600 RPM and didn't wear it at all. So, and then I also <laughs> tested uh, the uh, spark plug. This is the spark plug that goes in it and it looks pretty much like a glow plug. Yeah. Like in a, in a model airplane engine. And I was worried that this thing might act as a glow plug in the engine. So I took a big spark plug and mounted this in the big spark plug, screwed it in the go-kart, run it wide open, shut it off. It, it shut off immediately telling me that this will work. Huh. I don't know if you see that these are in that little cylinder head up there. Yeah. You see them? No, I didn't notice no, that. Didn't. Yeah, it's got these spark plugs in it. And I've already made a distributor and spun it and it fires these spark plugs in that cylinder here. Where's the distributor at? It's in that motor up here. Yeah, we didn't see any of those little details. Oh, I noticed the distributor. This is a little distributor. Benny drilled all the holes and then I hand shaped the rest of it. I made the distributor. So you started with a, you carved a hunk of plastic for that or is that painted metal? That's uh, 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 acetale. Huh. You see this? <laughs> See the little valve working? Yeah. So you do you have to run uh, any lash on this, or how do you figure that out? Well, you run uh, probably four thousand. Uh, right here is a little roll of tablet. That is amazing. And it it fits inside here. I have to take the pin out, but. <laughs> That goes inside here. And then this is mounted stationary in the block. That's what I was talking about. And uh, here's the little spark plugs. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. I never would have noticed that that was in there, I don't think. Are those spark plugs from a model airplane engine or did you make those? No, it, uh, we ordered them from a they probably make airplane spark plugs. Uh, some of the high, uh, large uh, remote planes would have this in it. Hmm. But you see, but the fact is, it didn't act like a glow plug. It, it, it's like a, a four cycle glow plug. Where it's marked with the pink, is that where it needs to be machined more? Benny, Benny makes it look like this. He does all the machine work here. Mm -hmm. And then I take it and make it look like that. Ah. It's not easy to drill a hole around the corner. No. <laughs> <laughs> I made several tools to do that. Do you have a little workstation where you sit down and carve stuff? Uh, I work back there all the time my playroom they call it this rock arm will look different when we finish it we'll shape it but that's the way it's going to work 
but it'll be it'll uh, be different than that. I mean, it'll it'll look like this. Okay, you're just making sure the mechanics of it's right before you make it look yeah, pretty. Right. Are you setting up with that little nut, like a uh, the adjustable lash cup? Yeah, it'll have a, a lock nut on it. And you see this piece of steel? Yeah. Benny, that's Benny Belcher. He made this right here out of that. That's Not with a CNC, this lathe over here. And then you gotta drill all these holes. And you gotta drill that hole and make it come out in the center here. So it has functional oil passages. Yeah, so how are, how are you gonna figure you're gonna drill this hole in and make it come out here? <laughs> I don't know. We have to start with a- Oh, here's a 4500 carburetor. And the linkage was hard to make up inside. What are you doing for an oil pump? Oil pump, we're gonna use a, a similar oil pump like uh, we run on the big ones on it, like a rear cooler pump. Like a little dry sump pump yeah. type thing? It'll have a dry sump on it. Interesting, so it's like every little, every little component of this engine is a project in itself. Oh yeah. And uh, even if it didn't run, to see the layout of the pieces is, uh, is something to look at. It, it is. <laughs> this is. This is extremely cool. Even the detail of this, um, the main cap back here, it's got a little dowel in it for the bearing. And yeah. you're going to make your own bearings too? He just made them. It would be interesting to make different camshafts for it for different sounds. <laughs> like to do some power testing on the cam profiles? Yeah. Do, do you think you'll get that far? We're going to get uh, use a, uh, a high powered go kart race cam and then uh, it'll be mounted on a shaft. It's, it's already up in there with one lobe on it already. Oh. And then you position the lobes in the right timing. And then it'll be on a, uh, it'll, it's a long uh, a keyway, so to speak, down that shaft. And then okay, he'll take it in the uh, rotor table and, and degree it and cut a slot in the, in the lobe to be the right time uh, on all of them. It won't be easy, but he's just amazing. It seems like, uh, it doesn't seem like any part of this is easy. He, he, yeah. just, he made these rods. Is that the easy part? Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it is. That is extremely nice. This is a 71 Mercury like David Pearson drove. Well, I've made some and had uh, fiberglass bodies and Eddie wanted me to make aluminum body. So I took a steel, made it out of steel, kept working on it, shaping it like I wanted it. And then you take thin uh, sheet metal, uh, I mean uh, aluminum, uh, and hand form it over this one to the half of it, and then two halves, and then you weld it together, huh. and then that's what you got. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought you And then, of course, this will have uh, windshield straps. It's just in there right now, but I'll make another one of them. And then it'll also have a back glass. And to make these, uh, these, that's supposed to be the chrome around the glass and uh, this little tool shapes in there and then you scrape it like that and just keep cutting it and that makes this. Wow. Without welding a piece on that. Uh, Did you know. make that tool yourself? Huh? Did you make that tool yourself? Oh yeah. What other kinds of tools have you made yourself to do these kinds of things? Oh, let's see. Making the little, little carburetor. It's got some little holes up in the, oh, don't have it. This is a little grill, 
and I made this uh, to go up in a hole, you know, with a short drill bit on it, you know. And then, of course, this is a saw. I had to saw little slots. <laughs> and uh, I do have a end on this one. <laughs> So it, that works pretty much the same way. <laughs> it's uh, I can show you. This is so cool. You see that slot right? Yeah. A yeah. slot right there. See, when you open that, fuel pulls through there on the acceleration. And then to saw that, I'd have a small saw to saw a slot up in that little carburetor. Huh. So that's the reason I made that. How did you like machine the, the body lines and all of that on the car? The what? On the, the car over there? How did you make all the body lines? How did you form that? Well, I just took the uh, shape of the real one mm -hmm. and I haven't finished it yet. I'll have, uh, uh, it's got a little flared out places and I got to build it up and then make that into here too. Mm -hmm. But I just kept working with it, hammering it and shaping it by looking at the car, the right shape, and then uh, that's the reason I wanted this, you know, to hammer over the metal and make it look like this. I'm just so amazed and dumbfounded that you can do that. I, I, I'm restoring a 67 Mustang and a lot of pieces I'm having to make myself. And it's just, all a learning experience and I don't understand how people are so talented to just do the things they well, do yeah, with metal. You know, uh, <laughs> sometimes if you want it bad enough uh, and heavy concentration, you can do more than you think you might, you know. Uh, I don't know if I showed you the lawnmowers I made, but I got tired of walking behind and walking behind a lawnmower, turning my ankles over, so I just made me a lawnmower uh, wide enough uh, so it didn't turn over. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, if you got a problem that inspires you, what can I do to solve the problem? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, it was a, uh, when building race cars, you know, uh, the handling or whatever, what can I do uh, to make it handle better? But now you're pretty much set on what you can do and can't do on the cars. I wasn't prepared for all of this. My dang battery died and the backpack is still in the front. Right. What did I miss? Uh, we're just talking about the, his sweepstakes car he made. Oh. He's gonna... You've never seen it, have you? Uh-uh. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I drove it into the uh, NASCAR Tech Center to Edsel and I actually drove, the, it'll run, you know, you can drive it. And actually it would outrun a go-kart, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting on top of it, you know, you don't feel, you know, it's too top heavy, you know, you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to run it that fast, but I could tell the, the way it run, it would outrun a go-kart. <laughs> like, you know, the saying, uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. The if what? If you like the saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, that's, that's like, the way I keep saying about you uh, getting older, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's, I, th I totally think that uh, all of my concentration and uh, as I get older uh, keeps me younger. It, uh, well, you know, I thank the Lord every day for keeping around this long, but I still feel, as long as I feel as good as I do now, I'll continue to work. Are you gonna have to build a half scale car to put it in? If I was younger, I would build a 71 Mercury and put this in it. Now this will have, I'm gonna make a set of headers It'll have a head as just like in the 71 Mercury, and then we'll have it on a stand and crank it up and run with the head as like is run on the Pearson Mercury. Is that your favorite race car? That's one of them. Uh, is the 58 convertible over there that Glenn drove that I liked a lot. 
were those headers on that engine equal length primaries or any science to that configuration? Yeah, yeah there was two ways to look at it. Uh, uh, you could have them all equal length, all crooked and all that. And then uh, they come up with a way to streamline that the exhaust pipes, the headers, and and then we'd stack them down the, the tailpipe to get the even length. But they found that the streamlining them worked too. You hmm. know, we had some of them that worked better than the equal length. Is that, were you talking about how each primary was flat and they kind of looked like an organ going into the exhaust that went out the side? Yeah, like you, your pipe is, uh, Yeah, your pipe is, uh, first header would go in right here, and your, and your uh, short head up here would go in back here. Okay. Stack them down here. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that set up before. Yeah. I didn't know why that they did that. And then, they, and then they also, you had a big box. Big box uh, this long, and about this wide, and then you'd have a first pipe with a no length inside the box, the long pipe, and then the short pipe would have a long pipe inside the box hmm. to make it the same length. Did that have an effect on horsepower? Oh yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it, it made them all ankle length again, and then the, the front ones were streamlined. That's fascinating. It wasn't, so, wasn't crooked. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's neat, because I've been messing around with equal length primaries and stuff, and I didn't know that like having them all make, instead of having go into one collector, you stagger them inside a, an empty chamber, like a plenum almost. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah, I made a box that uh, uh, set of headers had box, boxes on each side, you know, and Dan Gurney was running for us at Riverside, and he kept giving us signals. We can't figure out what he's saying. And then he's sticking his hands in his ears. We couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, come find out, the top blew out of that box. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's hammering against the floor pan. <laughs> sound, you know, and anyway, you end up winning the race anyway. But yeah, this is Benny Belcher. How you doing, sir? One How of the greatest you? machinists of all time. Now anybody could bore all this stuff and do all this stuff. What did you think whenever you were tasked with making these tiny parts? Well, I mean, I've been making parts my whole life. I mean, it's, <laughs> part is my boss, uh, boss man where I started work. You say parts is parts, but uh, I, I mean, it's a challenge to do it, but it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, hopefully one of these days, good Lord willing, we'll make it make some noise. <laughs> what about a head gasket? What is, what is that going to be? Yeah, we could do a lot of different ways. Uh, we're probably going to get a, a, a copper, make it out of solid, soft copper. Yeah, it'll work. And then we could put O-rings in it, in the combustion side and all that, but that's the plan right now is making a copper gasket. Since I knew what the half, uh, half size insane. piston was going to be, and rather than make the pistons, I went online and hunted until I found That's it. just amazing. Uh, Here's your half. And whenever you're camped out with your air tools whizzing, doing all your carving, do you have like ear headphones on? Do you listen to music? Do you just muffle it out? Like, how do you, do you just uh, like mentally checked out in the uh, zone? Like, I've, no, I've never wear headphones. And you can still hear as well <laughs> as you can? That's the reason I can't hear me. <laughs> you can hear pretty dang good. I'm surprised. Well, it's a funny thing in church. I cannot hear what they're saying up front. The echo in the in the building. Yeah. A lot of places the echo in the building, but I can up close. I can hear you as just plain as day. But if you was uh, in a big building and the echo, and I couldn't understand you. Hmm. Huh. Now, I don't know why that is. And on TV, I can understand Steve Harvey, everything he <laughs> says, and, and the contestants, but the movies, for some reason, I can't hear it. I, I can see that. It makes sense. I mean, especially, like, you have a strong voice, and I talk softer. Yeah. So, like... The projection. Yeah. That is interesting. Like, what, what's your... Do you get into a flow state whenever you're 
in the zone on something? Like, are you thinking about anything at all, or are you just doing no, doing the deal? Thinking about what I'm doing. <laughs> no, heavy concentration. I always, if I design the intake manifold or whatever, I always, uh, I didn't lay it aside and wait a while and all that. I, I finished. I stayed concentrating until I got it like I wanted it. You forget to eat, or forget to <laughs> go to bed, or. Well, uh, you know, it sounds like an a untrue statement, but I came home from uh, Dover, Delaware, and uh, was getting ready for a big race, and I uh, had a big project going, and I worked that night, next day, that night, next day, till Tuesday, Wednesday morning, without sleeping. <laughs> I worked the whole time without stopping. Did you just want to get it done? Or but that, it, there's no way you could do that. But you, you're so interested in making this thing work that uh, you can do that. Otherwise, you couldn't do that at all. Is it going to have a water pump? Yeah, oh yeah, it'll have a time encumbered and water pump. Now, there's no water in that block. Uh, it's not it's not made for water, but I will have a time. I will have a water pump on it. We know, could so it we right. could make it. We could uh, you know cut the block off a half inch and then uh, hog it all out and then put a plate on top of it and seal it. But there's no reason for that. All we're gonna do is just show to make it run. Now, if somebody's gonna give you a million dollars, you can go ahead and make it do whatever. <laughs> But uh, uh, there's no need to. Is this a that like is, a go kart piston? That's a production piston out of a Yamaha 125cc scooter. I mean, that's basically what it is. It's a little, it's a little mini bike. Are you using these in that engine? Mm -hmm. So you just took whatever your half scale bore would be and found the closest thing that would work. Yeah. And that's 54 millimeters, which was the closest thing to half the bore. Um, and of course, uh, you know, the, the crank is half, the crank is half in every dimension of what the real one is. But this wrist pin hole is up higher in the piston than what half the stock piston would have been. So the rod is actually longer center to center huh. to make the deck height work out. I haven't put the little studs in there yet. They'll, they'll screw on. But uh, like I said, I've already spun it, and it fires the spark plugs. Hooked up a coil to it and all that, spun it with a drill, and it fires that spark plug. What's the firing order? One, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight. Yeah. Is that like the standard yeah. Ford, it, Ford order at that time? Yeah, firing order. When, yeah. I, when I look at an engine, I, I see the Chevy numbering pattern. I don't speak Ford, so I have to like, translate it yeah uh, Chevy's uh, fives on the right side isn't it yeah it's yeah. evens and odds what Leonard was talking about how you you have to get into a mental state when you're doing something and not do nothing else that's the way I was when I machined the crankshaft out I, I told uh, the young lady up front I said if I get a phone call take a message don't don't come get me or interrupt me because it's that you're subject to make a mistake and that in that atmosphere and uh, it's easy enough to make a mistake doing something like that anyway so i was pretty much in a zone there for the six weeks i worked on that i didn't think about anything else didn't do nothing else <laughs> didn't you know didn't stop to i stopped to, for lunch but i didn't take breaks or anything like that i just stayed right with it are you still thinking about this thing when you go home for the day and, uh, like sometimes but uh, uh you know not really, not not right now. I mean, I've got that out of the way. The next hard thing is going to be the camshaft. If, if we can get that the way we want it and, and uh, get that done, then I'm going to start feeling a lot better about it, that it that it will work. Did you have to make any um, unique fixtures to make some of this stuff? Oh, yeah. Do yeah. you have any of that sitting around here? That... I've got fixtures all over the place that that I have made. A lot of times I'll take an existing fixture and modify it to do my work. But uh, I have all kinds of fixtures. That's a sweep six car. That's the way the rear end's made.
that's the way the springs are made and all that. Did you keep up with cell phone technology as it was coming out or did you just get a smartphone one day and figure out how to use it? Oh, I had to have somebody to get me started on that deal. <laughs> you're, you're whizzing through that thing faster than my dad and he's like 35 years younger than you. I'm like, was it, you know, you had a flip phone forever and then you just get one of these things or did you stay up to date with technology as it was? Oh my, uh, uh, Eddie's son, John, he's gonna laugh me off the premises for using the flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> so he, uh, ended up, I ended up getting a, well, here's uh, some of the stuff I uh, got going on. Is that your wide lawnmower? Yeah, that's that's two. That's a wide one. This is a wide one that I got at home, and this is a remote control. It's better than this one up here. Have you remote controlled mowed your whole yard before? No, it's it's way easier to mow a yard driving your tractor. <laughs> running your tractor, you know, you got to stay online and all that. Of course, my remote's way smaller. It takes me forever to mow it with the <laughs> small one, but. I can mow, uh, mow uh, small places and have fun with it. <laughs> uh, I mow uh, banks uh, where I don't want to crawl, um, <laughs> risk getting the thing uh, hung up, I just use it. So it does have a practical use. It does uh, work better if you got a, a, a yellow jacket's nest or something you want to go up and blow off. <laughs> So that's a fixture that the, the rod was profiled on, the outside contour. And of course, you can see the tool path where the end mill, where the end mill went, you know, when, as I done my work to profile the outside. So uh, it, but uh, that, all the contouring on the outside was done on this fixture right here. That bolted onto a rotary table in the bridge port. This is the fastest you run. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know, you probably got a hundred something by accident before. Well, like, yeah, like, legally on the drag strip, I don't know, but, like, on the highway, I've gone faster than I've gone on the drag strip. Yeah. <laughs> is that what the, is that the, uh, the uh, county mounted said? <laughs> I didn't get in any tickets or in any trouble, but I know that I can't legally say how fast I went on the road. <laughs> what is that down there? Is that the block fixture? Uh, yeah, the block has been on that. Um, that particular fixture there was the intake manifold. Um, you set it on that and rotate it wherever you want it in the lathe, I mean the milling machine. You know, you could mill something uh, if you could hold it. So he is so intelligent on making the right fixture to hold it where he can handle it properly, machine it properly. Well, what were you doing in here before making mini stuff was your uh, I did gears and transmissions in the beginning and did that all the way through 2014, huh. uh, 30, about 30 years of it. And then uh, once I quit working on the team, or wasn't with the race team anymore as far as the car went, the car, the competition side of it, uh, restored two of these cars in here. That 89 Sitgo car there was a, a shell sitting here. And that was the first thing they had me do, I restored that one. And then the Elliott Sadler car up there, the motorcraft car from 2001, restored that one. And, uh, you know, did some other various things here in the shop, helped with putting up the pictures and, uh, you know, all that sort of thing. And then Mr. Leonard come up here to work uh, not too long ago. He quit working in the Charlotte area and started working up here all the time with me. So that, that led to the, the miniature stuff and, and a lot of other restoration projects we've done. And like the the car that the sweepstakes car we sent to the henry ford museum the half scale car uh which it, mr leonard done most of that but i did help him some one thing i like to ask guys like you who are well into their 80s and still doing everything is what do you think the key is to uh, i think like, uh staying busy concentrating uh I lost my wife like uh, 26 years ago in a car crash and uh, uh, I live by myself, but I just concentrate on what I want to make and my nephews, Ed and Lynn, they come up with things they want me to make and I always wanted to make a 
uh, car, big car, you know, but I didn't have the money or the time, but they have me uh, doing things I enjoy making, like uh, the Lotus and all of that is similar to making a real car. And, uh, you mean record car? And then uh, the, the most rewarding thing I ever made was uh, uh, Henry Ford's uh, 1901, uh, they called a the sweepstakes car that won the first race, the only race he ever run, and, and Edsel said it started Ford Motor Company. But you've never seen the sweepstakes car. <laughs> this is me driving it up to Edsel. That's when I presented it to Edsel. Here's me driving it in. <laughs> Has some torque. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That fascination with making things little that run like RC cars or go-karts that was with you when you were a kid did that just stay with you? I started carving cars out when I was seven years old, out of a solid piece of wood. Uh, there's one up there, a little number 22, it's about a 24 scale. But uh, yeah, you know, I built a go-kart when I was 13. I've always been interested in uh, uh, engines and uh, 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 race cars or whatever. and. Uh, uh, always wanted something that would pull me along. The, uh, a friend of mine bought a bicycle and he put a, they had a kit you could buy uh, that you could put on it, a motor that would have a motorized bicycle. Now I envied him so bad, <laughs> I wanted one so bad, so my brother-in-law gave me a, a washing machine motor. It was a Johnson four cycle, not a two cycle. And uh, so I took it and made me a, that's what I, when I made the go-kart. <laughs> Was he jealous of your go-kart? Huh? Was he jealous of your go-kart? Uh, no, he, he was in the bicycle business, but <laughs> this was long afterwards. And uh, this go-kart was built 10 years before go-kart was ever made. So it didn't copy a go-kart, I mean, and the go-karts actually had the same steering deal as uh, what was on mine, but I'm not saying they copied mine, but <laughs> I sure didn't copy theirs. So. If the term go-kart didn't exist back then, what did you call that thing after you built it? I, I just, uh, I wanted four wheels and a motor. <laughs> 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 and the, and uh, the, the chain and sprocket come out of an amphibious army duck. My, uh, brother-in-law's brother, -in -law's brother uh, bought army trucks and the army trucks had the same running gear as an amphibious army duck. So he'd buy these army ducks for, for the motor and transmission and all and the rest was junk. Well I'd go to the junk pile and just get parts and make them. Were you self-taught? Were you self-taught? Were you learning all of this stuff on your own? Yeah. Or anybody showing you anything? My, my dad was a great mechanic and he would help me in any way if I asked him, but I didn't want his help. I just wanted something to do myself. Awesome. Yeah, I've been doing that all my life. How old were you when you learned how to weld? Uh, I was about uh, 12, 13. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I couldn't see see the, the, uh, the line, you know, so I took a helmet off. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> so, the next morning, you know how your eyes would feel after you do that. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I took welding in school, uh, the agriculture, uh, had welding classes. So they had 12-year-olds learn how to weld in school back then? Yeah, they would teach, teach, teach the students how to weld. And uh, then I, uh, to, to well to Heliarch, I learned uh, from people from Holman Moody. Hmm. So Holman Moody was ahead of their time. I mean, they just, uh, I mean, it was this great organization. So that's crazy now. Back then, you had kids learn how to weld, and they're 12 years old, and 
Now they gotta tell 12 year olds not to eat Tide Pods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, a lot different today than what it used to be. I can just, being 89 years old, you can imagine the different stages of everything going on that's happened uh, in my time. How much racing has changed, it's unbelievable. And that, that's why we do this stuff and we want to talk to guys like you because we want those stories and that information and life lessons to be available for people that are our age and younger moving forward. Yeah, for instance, like uh, back in the day, the chief mechanic, he built a car, the motor, and called the shots and everything. And then uh, uh, like uh, they'd have uh, like red boat special on the road on the, on the hood and all that. And now you got crew chiefs, car chiefs, and all that. Uh, and then crew chiefs now, it wasn't such thing as crew chief back then, and I don't know when it switched over and called it crew chief rather than chief mechanic. But now chief mechanic, I mean a, chief, a crew chief can, he can put the right people in the right places and call the right shots on race day. And you know, you can have the greatest race car ever was. Uh, it could win hands down and make a wrong call on on the pit strategy and lose the race. So, so uh, crew chief has got a lot on him nowadays. So much more, you know. Back back in the day, you just did it like you wanted to and didn't have to answer to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there was a specific time period that was like a, a high watermark of enjoyment or satisfaction? relative to your journey through time and motorsports and technology and the intermingling of them all? Well, I mean, back in the day, uh, if you come up with something, you know, it was uh, very rewarding. And uh, Brother Glenn and I worked together and uh, he was more on the business side and I was more on the uh, building the car. He never questioned my ability. He always, uh, wanted me to do it the way I wanted to do it and uh, you know and then he did the business and of course he helped me in the in the mechanical end too he, he could do that but he just uh, rather I do it I've been a, a Ford fan you know for more than 80 years that my uncle uh, bought a brand new 40 Ford maroon same color as the sweepstakes car you know uh, uh, chassis and uh, to think that to drive, build a half size and then drive it into the uh, uh, Ford Tech Center to Edsel Ford and, and deliver it to him is beyond my imagination. Have you ever had a personal vehicle that was not made by the Ford Motor Company? No, I, I always uh, been a Ford fan all my life. I'm, yeah, you know, there's great cars out there I, I don't have a problem with that I, it don't bother me if somebody wants to drive the other brand but all i can say is i prefer the ford brand uh it's uh, to me is as good a performance as any of them so you never felt like yeah you know I, I might feel like driving around a bmw someday or something like that i never wanted to have any other kind of even foreign cars and well, nothing. They, they're very uh, uh interesting you know uh, the, try them out, drive them, you know, see what they got, you know. See these guys, you know, uh, kind of disagreeing with each other. I think they're the best of friends, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when it's all over. And it's so much, uh, it's very rewarding to win the best it is out there. If you can beat the best one, you know, it's way more rewarding than beat somebody that's not near as competitive, you know, so the ones that's the hardest to beat uh, gives you more satisfaction. Did your relationship with the Petties get better when Kyle Petty was racing at the Wood Brothers? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, that's another thing, you, you never dreamed it. One day you'd be <laughs> having one of the Petties driving for you, you know, but, but we used to go to the movies together back when we was racing uh, Richard and David and uh, uh, show up to the movies. So you're aware of what your presence means to people around the, the industry now? Like, Well, it, uh, I can't help but uh, 
uh, feel the joy that people lead people treatment. There's not many people who uh, are able to live a life like you've lived, and it's inspiring. Yeah, well, when you live as long as I have, it, uh, it, you see a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's, it's sad, uh, you know, the people you have known is not with us anymore, and, uh, uh, and I thank you, Lord, every day for keeping me around as long as he has. And uh, I kind of look at it as, you know, and he gets ready to take me, you know, it's just, I just look at it as I'm going to live forever and whenever time comes, it comes. Get to recover any of that stuff because it was flowing? Believe it or not, it landed on his side and after we pulled it out, it probably didn't have over a gallon of water in the, <laughs> all in the box. <laughs> yeah. Was that here? No, that was over on the river in the other shop. Oh. Is that the, the shop that was on the stilts or the, the one, one after the, that? The no, the one, one after that. You okay. know, yeah, that, uh, that was the uh, first one we had here in town. first one we had was a beech tree. <laughs> <laughs> Did they explain that to you? Yeah. Yeah. How big was that shop, that first shop? Well, it was just a uh, two stall. I wondered how that worked with weight, like how much weight could be in the building being on stilts. Oh, uh, I don't know, but it never, <laughs> <laughs> it was a garage, uh, you know, a, a customer, uh, you know, a mechanical, mechanic had a repaired automobiles in there for a long time, and then we just rented it uh, after that. You know, Leonard Wood is one of those guys that I've really, really wanted to meet and to talk to and do a video with, kind of like uh, Ed Pink. You know, just the guys of that pioneer generation, because guys like Leonard are literally the last of the generation of man that really founded the world of hot rodding and racing as we know it today. There's not that many of them left, but the ones that are, we're gonna do our best to talk to and get documented so that people can watch these videos for years to come and think, dang, those guys were the greatest. I wanna be like Leonard Wood when I grow up. I can say that for sure. And everybody out there who has parents, everybody has parents, you know, they're getting older, you tell them, look at these guys. Look at Leonard Wood, look at Ed Pink, look at Dale Inman. These guys that are well into their 80s are they still sharp as a tack because they never quit and they always kept themselves interested with something don't turn your brain off you can uh you can go a lot farther than you think you can if you want to i believe that and if you haven't checked out found something else to watch yet i'd just like to say you're awesome because um not everybody wants to hear me talk and i'm fine with that i don't like it i think there's a lot of people that miss out on some great information whenever they skip over parts where i talk because i can see that in the audience retention dips they just you know who cares about the guy who found this stuff for you i just want to watch so and so talk you don't think that you might be able to learn something from me that i was able to put all this together and build this channel and make relationships with these people that i might have something useful to tell you too think about it but if you are still watching this you're probably not that person because you would have checked out a long time ago the people who don't care are the ones that uh irritate me because I want you to learn I want you to be better I want you to get the maximum amount of value from this stuff because I put a lot of dang work into it if you want to help the channel you can send this video to a friend hit the thumbs up cost you absolutely nothing if you do want it to cost you something you can go to stapletonautoworks.com grab yourself a hat or a shirt some stickers we always put a handwritten note in the packages and we pack stuff right out of here the tide starts coming in <laughs> <laughs> So it's all only about a half an inch deep, you know, the water just flowing in, you know. When we hit that tide, that thing turned sideways. Now I'm looking out the side glass knowing oh we're going to crash. <laughs> and, uh, it went back this way one time and back this way and he hit the throttle and pulled it out as straight as air. So I said, Mr. Glenn going to be the race car driver and I'll just stick to building them. <laughs>